Good morning. We finished up First Peter, and sometimes we need to just be able to spend a little while taking inventory of our own lives. And so what I'd like to do is go through a very brief uh, Thought for the Day series in Psalm 15. It's a short psalm, but a psalm that I think might be uh, helpful to us in thinking about uh, the kind of life that we ought to have. So it's not, it's not a long psalm, and I think it'll be good to just read through it uh, this first morning. Uh, a Psalm of David, verse 1, O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue, and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Verse 1 sets the table. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? It's the psalmist's way of asking this question. Who is the kind of person ethically that can come before you, that can uh, worship you, that can come into your presence? It's an important question because when we come to worship the Lord, of course, we come under the new covenant on the laurels of Jesus. So we come and we have the full rights to be there, which is a beautiful thing because we're his children. Along with that, though, we also want to recognize that we bring an ethical life, a practical ethical life. I'm redeemed by the cross, and yet in that redemption, I am living as the redeemed or I'm living like the world. And so there's some good ethical reminders in this passage of the kind of life we should come to the Lord with. So the first is, is really the general statement. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? Verse 2, he who walks blamelessly and does what is right. Now we're going to see a number of things that flow out of that. For now, let's just focus on the fact that we are to be blameless and we're to do what's right. Now, in Christ, you're blameless. In Christ, you don't have anything that is held against you. So the gift of the gospel is that there's nothing you can do if you've received Christ that could disqualify you from being able to worship. But you want your life to be consistent with that confession. So you want to be blameless and you want to do what's right. Well, in the next several days, we're going to kind of look and see what this psalm has about doing what's right. For now, in this morning, I just want you to think about the privilege you have to come and worship the Lord because of the gospel that makes you blameless. May the Lord bless you today.